Good Thursday evening, everybody. Live and direct from downtown Memphis, Tennessee. I'm meteorologist Austin Onik with a quick check of your forecast into the weekend. Things are looking hot and steamy, even as a new winter storm makes its way toward the northwestern United States, which could be a problem for travel into the next couple of days. Not here, unfortunately, but we will be taking a look at for more possible impacts of that weather, mainly north of us. So if you've got any plans for travel, please make certain to keep it tuned to News Channel 3 for more on the latest on this. We're kind of right in the middle of our newscast segments for right now. Time, as you can see, about 5.43 p.m. So, again, getting ready for everything going on here in just a little bit as the anchors and the producers keep an eye on stuff back there in the background for us. We're going to be, again, continuing to see some pretty active weather when it comes to heat and humidity. Wish we could give you a little bit better possibilities of cooler weather, but here's the thing. They are out there. It is going to be happening as we get into the next few days at Again, at the end of the 10-day forecast, but still there is hope of some less hot weather coming our way. So that's the good news for tonight, and stick around for that. We'll have that coming up in just a bit. Should be a pretty warm evening across the Mid-South with numbers back in the mid to upper 70s through the rest of the evening. And again, winds light out of the east-northeast, so not a great amount of breeze out there. If you're just tuning in and joining us and haven't been here before, drop your location and any weather reports you've got out there. Let's see what's going on in your neck of the woods. Temperature, wind speed, cloud cover, whatever you got. We'll read those off off the comments section. If you can't stick around for the whole update, that's cool. Go to wreg.com slash weather for more information or keep an eye on the blue bar down here as the weather scrolls by you to keep you updated as to what's going on out across the Mid-South area. Devin Norman, glad cooler temps coming. Yes, uh, definitely glad to be able to tell people about that. So that's a nice little thing uh, that we're looking at right now. Cameron McNeil, when will the heat wave end? Uh, hang on to that thought. We'll talk about that coming up here in just a little bit for right now. Cynthia Burse Wesson traveling to hot springs from Memphis. Uh, so far so good, but a chance of rain out there here and there. We'll take a look at radar coming up here in a little bit, so thanks again for checking on through. Uh, Andrea Rovine Ellenberg needs some rain. It's getting very dusty, and on that note, we've got some wildfire information for you coming up in just a little bit as burn bands start sneaking back into the area. 90 degrees average where we should be for this time of the year, 81 for, again, the Mid-South at this area of the country. So again, chance of rain. We did pick up some this morning, about two tenths of an inch for the entire month of September, just over a tenth of an inch. And again, this is typically one of the drier months of the year. So we're not going to be getting a lot of deluges in here unless we get like a whole bunch of tropical storm systems coming up this direction. So not really seeing much relief, at least just yet anyway. Oxford, Mississippi, University of Mississippi, 88 degrees, humidity decently low. Looking back toward the Student Union, winds out of the northwest at about eight miles per hour for tonight. Uh, back from Oxford to around Collierville, some sunshine mixed in with the clouds. Temperatures back in the mid to upper 80s on the square in Collierville, heading toward the dinner hour tonight. Golfers out and about, but kind of hard to see with the sunlight getting into the camera. Wrapping up a day of golf on the fairways in southeast Memphis. And so far, good news for travelers around 240 and Poplar for tonight. Traffic is heavy on the backside of rush hour, but again, it's moving along pretty nicely. And visibility nothing to worry about at this point in time, so good news for the commuters out there. New storm system heading into the upper Midwest, and this thing could be causing a lot of problems for travelers anywhere, say, north of Denver and back to the west of the Dakotas. As this storm system plows in from the Gulf of Alaska, it's going to draw in a lot of warm, moist air, and that's going to create possibly near blizzard conditions in parts of the upper Rocky. So if you're heading that way, that could be an issue for, again, later on this weekend. In the meantime, here in the Mid-South area, we've got precious little going on. A few speckles of rainfall from time to time, but that is about all that we see uh, into and around the area for tonight. And outside of that, looking on the regional radar, there's just really not that much out there for the time being. Welcome to everybody who's tuning in for tonight. Uh, Connie Ramsey Ray from Summer, Tennessee. John Pace from Memphis, welcome to the show. William Skage showing off with that very cool 68 degree temperature from Detroit. Thank you very much uh, for that one into and around the area. Ripley, Mississippi, Gene Cunningham, welcome to the show. Appreciate that. Uh, Cynthia Burse-Wesson, you were asking about this earlier. Back to around the Hot Springs area. 
not that much going on right now, but could be a stray shower or thunderstorm, depending on if you're leaving tonight uh, or tomorrow. So it could be some information there that uh, might slow you down there by just a bit, some rainfall across the area. Jennifer Hill from Hernando, welcome to the show. And from the Hope Market, Cindy Taylor Few, welcome. Thanks a lot for joining us for everybody. Let's go ahead and run the numbers for tonight. We've got heat indexes out there right now in the mid-90s. We're going to be seeing temperatures only falling through the mid to upper 70s. There is a slight chance of maybe a stray shower or two for southwest Tennessee and northern parts of Mississippi. But beyond that, that's going to be about it. That should pretty well dwindle as we head toward News Channel 3 at 10. I'll just be on for the 6 o'clock show. Tim Simpson has an event downtown that he can't make for the weather tonight, so he'll be back to give you a forecast on News Channel 3 at 10. Todd Demers will be on tomorrow morning at daybreak. Some temperatures may be in the mid-60s, but mainly upper 60s to lower 70s with that nice, healthy, southeasterly breeze coming on through. Chances of rain through tomorrow morning, light and not that much to worry about at this point in time, so just outside the viewing area toward northeast Mississippi, middle Tennessee, and northern Alabama. Light chances only, and that's going to be it through the rest of the day, although some sprinkles might make their way up to around, say, Oxford, Water Valley, Bruce, Batesville, uh, just north and around the area of Corinth up toward the Tennessee River tomorrow afternoon. Now, tomorrow evening at this time, Friday night, wrapping up the week and the school week and everything else going on, we might see better chances of a shower or maybe a thunderstorm in the eastern parts of the viewing area. Small chance at this point in time, but it's going to be a very warm kickoff for September. So heading out to Friday night football tomorrow night, definitely want to think about packing that extra bit of ice water along just to cool yourself off because it is going to be pretty steamy around here come kickoff tomorrow evening. All right, so seven-day forecast. Here's where the changes kick in, but not for a while. Lower to mid-90s for Friday, hot and humid, right on into the first weekend of autumn. Yeah, you heard me. That's, again, going to be at some pretty steamy conditions out there, some 10 to 15 degrees above normal for both Saturday and Sunday. By Sunday, we approach the mid to upper 90s. Doesn't look like record-breaking temperatures, but that's very slim amounts of good news with this forecast for right now. And until we get into around the end of next week, temperatures don't head back toward the lower 90s. It's going to be hot but doesn't look like any other interference as we go toward Election Day next week. So get out like a good citizen should and cast your ballot if you're of age and make certain that you're registered and ready to go. Election Day looks hot and steamy, but no possibility of severe weather or anything else coming on through. Here's the relief as we get into the second weekend of autumn. It might actually feel like autumn for a change. We're going to be getting back into the lower 80s by not this Sunday, but next Sunday, and even that is going to be just a bit above normal. At that time of the year, by early October, we should be in the mid to upper 70s. So we'll be a little warmer out there, but it definitely isn't the upper 90s. So we will be dropping the temperatures by a little bit. Next best chance of anything involving rainfall, it's not great, but next Friday night, might be a bit of an issue out there as we head toward October 4th and still some pretty steamy conditions as we get into the late portion of the week. Lee County in Arkansas and Tate County in Mississippi under official countywide burn bans until further notice. No other counties in the News Channel 3 viewing area under a burn ban at this time. And Tennessee does not specifically issue burn bans unless on a greatest need basis. Uh, right now, we're not seeing anything except in the very far eastern part of the state around Cookville and Knoxville picking up some burn bans, but that's it for right now. Even more burn bans being added to this list, especially across Arkansas. As things get dry, no outdoor burning of yard waste, garbage, anything else like that. Again, any burn off of anything like that, you should check with your fire department or your local forestry division, which is where we get this information from in the first place. More information like this, go to wreg.com slash weather and we'll pick you up the data on that. Tropics, good news. The Gulf is clear, nothing going on there at this point in time. Looking out into the Atlantic, we've got Lorenzo farther out. We'll take a look at that in just a second. Karen is weak, encountering some dry air from the Sahara. It's going to loop back around on where it has been 
as just a tropical depression or a remnant low and is not expected to be a threat, that dry air knocking the stuffing out of that storm. Now, the other storm farther out into the Atlantic is Lorenzo, and it is a monster so far, gaining strength at Category 4 winds now at 140 miles per hour, but the great news about Lorenzo's path is that it might be a threat for the Azores, maybe even to Europe and Great Britain as just a windstorm as it goes up into those colder waters, but nothing else taking place at this time. So good news for Lorenzo's purposes. We have little, if anything, to worry about approaching the continental United States at this point. We still have a good portion of the season to go, so keep it tuned to News Channel 3. Poinsett County, if you're around Truman, Arkansas, Jonesboro, Manila, anything north of Osceola, uh, anything again around Truman, drop by the fire department in Truman tonight at 6 p.m. coming up here in just about another 10 minutes or so. Meetings last for about an hour and a half. Next couple ones will be coming up across the Mid-South as you learn more about Skywarn from the National Weather Service in Memphis. So if you'd like to become a Skywarn spotter, there will be about 13 more opportunities to do so in the course of the next several days and weeks. So please consider becoming a spotter for the National Weather Service chase courses and becoming a storm chaser. That's an entirely different thing. And you do not chase storms unless you have been trained by experts Period. End of sentence. Don't argue with me on this, okay? But spotters, you can do it. You can help your community. You can be better trained for severe weather, and you can help the National Weather Service by being their eyes and ears in the field. Please consider becoming a spotter. It's a great way to serve your community, great way for kids. I've seen as young as eight or nine becoming spotters to learn more about severe weather. Good opportunity to learn more out there, so check it out for more details on that. All right, one more look at the forecast into tomorrow morning. Not that cool. Temperatures going back into around the lower 70s for low temperatures. Sunny and 79. Uh, Grady Bennett in Berclair. Thank you very much for that one. Appreciate the weather reports uh, into and around the area for right now. Uh, Daryl Yates acting like it's summer, telling the days are not as long. The days are not as long. The temperatures are definitely like summertime, so that right there is mainly what we're focusing on, and summer-like temperatures are going to be continuing. So thank you, Mr. Yates, for pointing that out. Do appreciate that. At least it's a little bit less hot on Mars anyway, and it's approaching summertime there with a high temperature at the Curiosity rover site of 13 degrees below zero and a low temperature in Gale Crater on Mars of 115 degrees below zero. Want to know more? Go to mars.nasa.gov for more exo-meteorology or weather off-world if you're interested in that. More coming up on your forecast a little bit later on tonight with Tim Simpson at 10. Jim Jaggers is out on Go Jim Go. Tune into our website, wreg.com, to find out what he's up to. And also, again, stay tuned for more with Todd Demers bright and early tomorrow morning on News Channel 3 Daybreak. I'll be back on the air in about four minutes with News Channel 3 at 6. And, of course, stay tuned for more on our social media websites, and we'll keep you updated throughout the rest of Friday and right into the weekend. Thanks for joining us. Questions, concerns, ideas, comments, complaints, if you absolutely must, austin.onic at wreg.com. Thanks for joining us for tonight. Stay tuned for more with News Channel 3 throughout the rest of Friday and right on into the weekend.